All right, it's good to see you. Good morning. How are you doing this Monday morning? I hope that you're well. The sun is out, so it's not too much cold right here in Nairobi, but I hope you're well, wherever you are. Thank you very much for joining us on My Doctor. My name is Winnie Lubembe. Now, experiencing occasional anxiety is a normal part of life, but what if you have intense, excessive, or persistent worry and fear about everyday situations? Well, you might actually be suffering from anxiety disorders and that is what we'll be tackling today on my doctor that is on anxiety disorder so you know the drill if you have any question in regards to today's topic then feel free to call us live or 7914789900 or better yet send us a text message on 40920 and we'll be more than glad to answer all your questions as far as anxiety disorders are concerned so my guests are here and of course ready to answer all your questions and give us um, you know more info as far as anxiety disorders are are concerned so let's meet them good morning how's the new month how's the new week and actually a new day <laughs> for you guys you mm, well fine, yes. yeah. yeah all right so thank you very much to both of you for coming right today mm -hmm. and we'll start with you you've been so lost so you need to tell us where you've been <laughs> <laughs> all this while just hi say hi to the people Good morning, uh, my name is Christina Lenjo and I'm a counseling psychologist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Karibu sana. Thank you. All right, and on to you. Say okay. hi to the people. Hi to mm -hmm. my name is Mary. I'm a psychiatrist. Okay. Yeah, I work at the Texas Cancer Center. All right. Perfect people actually to discuss this. Mm -hmm. And and I know when, when we talk about anxiety, <laughs> you know, most of us will be like, but wait, we all face anxiety every single day <laughs> if not most of the time but then again when does it become a disorder and i think that is what we're here to talk about but we'll just start with the basics anxiety disorders what do we mean when we talk about anxiety disorders we'll start with you christina uh so basically um if you're having an anxiety disorder it means that uh, you're always experiencing intense um excessive and persistent worry and fear about um you know everyday situations mm -hmm. And uh, this worry is um, difficult to control. Right. It's difficult to control, mm -hmm. and it tends to affect all areas of your life. Mm -hmm. So it impairs your social functioning, it impairs your occupational functioning, mm -hmm. it even impairs how you also uh, relate with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, you find that this anxiety is so excessive and overwhelming mm -hmm. that um, you, you tend to avoid situations or places mm -hmm. that uh, would uh, yeah. Provoke anxiety. Anxiety, yeah. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and you, you avoid them because you want to prevent, mm. uh, you know, that anxiety, anxiety from happening. Yeah, but does that help, the prevention part? Like you you avoiding <laughs> situations that uh, will um, bring, you know, cases of, um, you know, someone being anxious or anxiety. Does that help, the prevention part? Um, it helps for that moment. Right. Uh, but again, I mean, there are other underlying factors. Mm. So basically, it's just a mm. temporal kind of prevention okay. uh, or avoidance. Uh, All right. It's basically an escape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And you know, when we talk about anxiety, I mean, um, and, and the persistent um, you know, aspect of it, because most of the time you'd find that, um, you know, persistency, I mean, sometimes, you see, if I'm scared of talking in front of people, of course, I'll experience cases of anxiety. If I have the fear of height, <laughs> I will experience anxiety. Or if I... I am in a situation, like you said, that might provoke, um, you know, my levels of anxiety to, to go high. I mean, we, we get that on a day-to-day -day basis. But now I want to understand, um, you know, in terms of now, how does it become a disorder per se? Because, and, and when does this start? Because Does it start when someone is a child or does it catch up with them when they are older or, you know, something like that? So we'll talk to you, Mary. Um, so... When does this become a disorder? Because like I said, we all have cases or issues where, of course, brings us anxiety. But then uh, when, when does it now, of course, translate into being a disorder? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that question. Mm -hmm. As a psychiatrist, first we always start with the normality and then we go to abnormality. All right. So we have to understand what is anxiety. Mm -hmm. Because so many people, when you say anxiety, mm -hmm. they may not understand what is anxiety. Mm. Some ask, the, ask themselves what is the difference between worry and anxiety. Exactly. And mm -hmm. so anxiety mm -hmm. is the normal emotions mm -hmm. that involve some nervousness. All right. And that nervous may be, it may be caused due to a certain problem. You don't know how to face a problem mm -hmm. at workplace. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to face a, a test that is ahead of you. Mm -hmm. Or rather, you have a good decision how that you have to make. All right but you don't know how you go so that you make it in the best way possible. Mm. So that's how anxiety mm. comes in. Mm. More so, 
it always takes a very short period, mm. especially after tackling that problem, mm. then it goes away. It goes away. Uh -huh. But when you develop anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. that one, it means that anxiety has persisted for some time, mm. that you are trying to tackle a certain issue, mm. but still you feel you are not tackling what you want. Mm. And it may take a very lo somehow long period. All right. And that one develops anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. So in other words, anxiety disorder, is a, a situation whereby uh, one may have experienced some worries, mm. some fear and anxiety itself mm -hmm. that n may be strong enough to make that person fail mm -hmm. to do his normal work, mm. face maybe the abnormal situations in life. Mm -hmm. means no, mean it means that not normal way that has been living. All right. And it w involves that one so that that person may try to avoid mm some issues for example want to tackle a certain problem but mm. that problem cannot be tackled so try to avoid the same problem yeah. or, or rather the same situation okay for example somebody is trying to fight a certain medical disease mm. trying to avoid that disease yet it cannot be avoided mm. so that one develops in anxiety disorder all right but now when when it and, and christina talked about the aspect of persistency and um i, I want to understand so a normal person who, we have cases of anxiety here and there, and then let's say you face the situation and then your levels go down. But now for a person with anxiety disorder, does this person experience this, let's say the entire day or the entire period where they're facing that situation and after facing the situation, um, do they come down or the anxiety levels still remain where they are at or even shoot higher? Okay, um, first of all, I think I would, uh talk about it mm -hmm. from the fact that uh, we have different, different types, types of anxieties yes. and therefore with those different types of anxieties mm -hmm. then your anxiety will be provoked or triggered mm -hmm. by certain um, maybe situations mm -hmm. or, or, or events mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, or things yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um, you asked if you, mm -hmm. you you experience anxiety throughout throughout yes well, like for example, in the case of generalized anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. then you would have anxiety throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're not able to pinpoint. Um, you know, you're not able to pinpoint an exa uh, a specific, specific uh, event, event, or, or yeah. you know. So you might worry about a certain topic, and then the next minute you're worrying about mm -hmm. a different topic or a right. different situation. Right. So, for example, if you have that the general um, generalized anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. you find that. Um, if you're a mother, probably you've taken your child to, let's say, um, to, to a new school, for example. All right. You'll keep worrying that, okay, will my child be able to cope? Mm -hmm. um, is my child okay? Mm -hmm. You know, such things. Mm -hmm. And then you go to work, and, and probably you're five minutes late or ten minutes late, then you're worrying about um, what will my boss say? Will it have, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, is my job, uh, you know, is my job security, security threatened? Yeah. You know, so you worry about so many things mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at um, social anxiety or social um, phobia, mm -hmm. then that anxiety is triggered in social situations, right. whereby you, you in a situation where uh, there's an expectation of being um, judged mm -hmm. or being evaluated. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're asked to public speak, mm -hmm. then that, that is the point whereby that anxiety will be yeah, triggered. Will be triggered. Yeah. All right. When you talk about separation anxiety again, that happens in children, mm -hmm. you find that that anxiety will happen when that child is being separated from the right. parent or mm -hmm. from someone who has taken up a parental role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And the type of anxiety, of course. That, that's that. the more yeah. mm -hmm. So some might have, from what you said, the generalized type where yeah. they might have anxiety all through because mm -hmm. they worry about something and then they move on to worry about something else and something yes, else yeah, so by the yeah. time they realize that they've been they have anxiety the entire <laughs> the entire time yes, or yeah. the entire day yeah. all right now so the, with the different types of anxiety then mm -hmm. what causes anxiety really because i know of some people who would say well these problems because you know the way they say rich people problems so some of them might be like yeah this is like a rich kid problem because i mean they're not used to that you know the way life sometimes might be really difficult and someone yeah. doesn't know how to, to handle it and then mm. levels of anxiety depression and most of the time sometimes suicide um, you know thoughts so for anxiety disorder what really causes it then yes, anxiety disorder is, has uh, around three types of causes mm -hmm. although the main cause is not known yeah but you have the predisposing factors mm -hmm. and one is the environmental mm -hmm. 
another one is change in mind, that's change in brain, mm -hmm. and another one is gene. Right. Uh, when you come to change in mind, mm -hmm. for example, there is somebody always is the character has just taken one character, mm -hmm. but due to the environment or rather change in life has to change that character. And that mm -hmm. character has been in the brain, it's like the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that person to change mind, to shift to another problem, to another life situation, mm -hmm. then may cause him to be so anxious to a point of developing anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. and then uh, we have environmental, mm -hmm. like uh, we have some areas, some surroundings that are not secure, mm -hmm. maybe thugs are all over. So this person, most of the time when it comes in the evening, mm -hmm. always get worried mm -hmm. that I may be broken into. Mm -hmm. So when that worry persists, then that person will develop anxiety disorder mm -hmm. because of worrying about the environment. Right. We have a gene. Mm -hmm. We have some condition, especially disorder, some disorder that always run in the family, mm -hmm. whereby from one generation to the other. So mm -hmm. because of that, for example, it may be a medical disease, mm -hmm. but it's running from one person to another, like this uh, horrendous disease called cancer. Mm -hmm. Maybe this person has seen the aunt has died, the brother, the grandmother died of the same. Mm -hmm. So they start to be anxious, mm -hmm. worrying who will be the next person. Mm -hmm. And that one may cause that anxiety disorder due to that disease mm -hmm. that is coming in the mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And, and um, Christina, would you want to chime in a little bit, um, you know, on, on still on the same, on, <laughs> on the courses? Because now, um, for what I understand, and especially mm -hmm. in the change of the, the brain, um, or brain activity, how does, how, does, how does it change? Because I want to understand a normal person's brain functionality mm -hmm. and, or the structure and a person mm -hmm. with anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. how, how different is it? Um, now, the brain has <coughs> certain chemicals mm -hmm. on a <coughs> normal basis. Yes. The, the brain has certain chemicals mm -hmm. that control our thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, control our emotions, and also, of course, uh, by extension, our, our actions. Yeah because our thoughts and our emotions will influence our actions. True. So it comes a time when um, those chemicals are imbalanced mm. because probably of uh, the um, events that have, uh, you have experienced yeah. mm -hmm. and also um, things that you have used. All right. So in that case, we are talking about, uh, I've talked about events. Huh? Mm -hmm. So traumatic events, for example, mm. would uh, be a, a risk factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, traumatic events, of course, are known to also change, uh, you know, affect the chemical imbalance, um, mm -hmm. balances in the brain, in the brain. and okay. cause imbalances. All right. um, at the same time, uh, the use of substances and drugs mm -hmm. can also upset the normal balance, uh, chemical balances in the brain. In, in the brain. Right. Okay. So we are talking about the use of, um, you know, alcohol, mm -hmm. the use of, um, of, of um, other drugs like caffeine, mm -hmm. um, also nicotine that is found in cigarettes. Mm -hmm. We're talking about substances like marijuana or mm -hmm. cannabis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they mm -hmm. are known to cause anxiety yes. or trigger anxiety or right. induce anxiety. Yeah. Uh, we are looking at um, drugs like um, inhalants. Uh, you know, like when you, you see street boys inhaling mm -hmm. glue. Yeah, yeah, that can cause anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we are looking at um, uh, drugs that we call hallucinogens. Mm -hmm. um, also, some antihistamines can mm -hmm. can can cause um, can cause can so, induce anxiety. All right. um, yeah, and then we also have medications also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've talked yeah. about actually antihistamines. Mm -hmm. yes. We've talked about medication that um, is used for the treatment of thyroid problems. Mm -hmm. It can cause anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, medication that is uh, used in the treatment of respiratory conditions like mm -hmm. asthma or COPD, that is chronic mm -hmm. obstructive mm -hmm. pulmonary disorder. Mm -hmm. Oh, disease. Disease, disease yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Um, that can cause anxiety. We are talking about uh, medications that treat diabetes mm. or hypertension. And even oral contraceptives are known to actually cause um, cause anxiety because, right. you know, they, oh, you yeah. know it's the hormonal. Yeah. Yes. yeah, so certain okay. hormones, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and also, uh, yeah, you talked about something else that can affect the brain mm -hmm. chemistry. Mm -hmm. Some tumors, there are some rare tumors that mm -hmm. uh, when you develop those tumors, mm -hmm. they tend to produce hormones that um, that create that fight flight response, yes. you know. Yeah. So you're always anxious. You mm -hmm. you tend to have such anxiety mm -hmm. um, uh, issues. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But now, 
is, is there like a specific duration, especially to the exposure? Mm -hmm. For instance, if someone is smoking, because again, there's some people who might argue and say, but me, I've been smoking for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I've seen my parents smoke, yeah. I've seen my grandfather smoke, yeah. but they're okay. They do not have issues with anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, same case with marijuana and alcohol, and uh, before we even talk about the, the mm -hmm. medication. Mm -hmm. um, so is this dependent on the duration of exposure or other factors also come to play in that mm -hmm. they might again induce or cause um, anxiety disorders? We have some other factors. Mm -hmm. As much as it uh, depends on the duration, but we have some factors that we may cause. Because mm -hmm. we have some people, mm -hmm. the reason of smoking maybe mm -hmm. has just gone there because of stress or rather mm -hmm. taking alcohol is because of stress. Yeah. Meaning it does not solve the, the problem, mm -hmm. but it's adding another problem mm -hmm. innocently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this person, when taking that alcohol, after that, after that alcohol has been worn from the mind, mm -hmm. then the anxiety goes to another level mm -hmm. because realizes the problem is still waiting for that person. Right. So that will take a very short period, mm -hmm. this person to develop anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. But there is somebody maybe it is genetically mm -hmm. the smoke that smoking is genetically yeah. that person will may take mm -hmm. a certain period mm -hmm. because doing out of pleasure yeah. and you know when the mind is healthy cannot be affected that way faster True. than the person who is affected in mind all right yeah, so all it right. depends on the duration okay and the type all right okay and then again um the aspect of now someone who is on medication for instance diabetes um, and, and in Helens, especially for asthma, which, again, <coughs> that now concerns me. Um, so, again, is this dependent on the duration? Because, I mean, people are on medication, let's say sometimes, maybe for a long period, others don't use, especially, you know, the, the, um, especially for asthma and all that. Some use it for, like, almost every day. Others do not use it, like, every single day again. So is this dependent on exposure? And then... How do we reduce now the, the chances or the risk of getting anxiety disorders? Because again, you might find that this person is dependent on this medication. And if they don't take it, of course, mm -hmm. it will have an effect I mean, on the other side of their health. But then again, they also try to avoid cases of getting anxiety disorders. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, please rephrase your question. All right. Sorry. <laughs> so the Sorry. question is now. Yeah. Um, how then can they, because like I said, they need all this medication. Yeah. Yes. They're okay. dependent on it. Yeah, yeah. But then again, if they do not take it, mm. they are at risk of probably developing other complications. But mm. then again, mm. on this other side, there's that aspect of they might get anxiety mm. disorders. Okay. So is there sort of like a balance um, you mm -hmm. know, to it so that they do mm -hmm. not end up getting a lot more complications from mm -hmm. not taking their medication mm -hmm. and also not develop anxiety disorders? Okay. Um, now, should you take, should you be on, okay, should you be having a condition mm -hmm. that requires you to be on certain medications mm -hmm. and then they end up uh, inducing anxiety, anxiety then yeah. you need to go back to your doctor mm -hmm. uh, so that the doctor can have a review mm -hmm. of, 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 um, of the, the medication. Mm -hmm. uh, now, at that point, the doctor will weigh the benefits mm -hmm. versus, versus the, the risk. Yeah, mm -hmm. versus the risk. Mm -hmm. And if the benefits are higher mm -hmm. or more mm -hmm. than the risks, then probably you'd still have to use the medication. Yeah. Or the doctor might also want mm -hmm. to change into another class of drugs mm -hmm. to handle the same issue. Mm -hmm. So that's how I'd look at it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. In, addition, right. mm -hmm. in addition to that is that uh, when the doctor always gives certain medication, mm -hmm. always give a period of that medication mm -hmm. because the prolonged, <coughs> the prolonged period mm -hmm. always brings some side effects. Sure. Mm -hmm. especially addiction mm -hmm. you may yeah. feel you may get a patient saying that i'm using this drug but when i change i don't feel like yeah, this one is doing healthy. anything yeah. so that is why when <coughs> the doctor realize when doctors realize that mm -hmm. then they always change medication and then mm -hmm. and some medications it always act as a side effect mm -hmm. and when it is a mild side effect and then the doctor will just adjust the dosage mm -hmm. but when it's a severe side effect mm -hmm. then has to change that medication immediately. Right. So we advise our patients that immediately you feel that one, then you have to go back to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Not to wait that, may I finish this dose before I go back? Mm -hmm. So that may know whether to change or to reduce or the to dosage. Reduce the dosage. Yeah. All right, now let's talk about personality types. Um, and, and does a person's personality sort of um, determine whether they might get, or first of all, does it have an, an, an impact in terms of one's chances of getting uh, anxiety disorders, do they? 
Yeah, yeah, it does. Huh? All right. Uh, because there are people who are more prone to anxiety mm. than others. Right. Uh, and it all depends on their personality. Mm -hmm. So the people who tend to worry a lot about small things, even mm. small things that uh, you shouldn't worry about. Mm. But you'll find that some people keep worrying about such mm. things. All right. yeah. And with time, that will develop into an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So personality actually plays it, a it role. It plays a role. Yes. All right, now, can we talk about those different types of personalities? Um, just in case someone does not know the different types of personalities mm -hmm. and then address which one is more they're more prone to sort of getting anxiety disorders and then of course we'll talk about the ways of them of course preventing cases of developing anxiety disorders Mary, mm -hmm. you want to take that okay mm -hmm. when you come on especially on the personality mm -hmm. most of the time patients it affects all personalities all right especially when the the genetic part is prone ah, in that. Is involved. Yeah. Right. So okay. when the genetic part is prone in that mm -hmm. field, mm -hmm. then this person it doesn't matter with the personality. All right. It will just come affect that person, and then mm -hmm. this person will try to retreat, mm -hmm. fight it back. Mm -hmm. But you will it may be case with the personality. Of right. course, it also contributes. Mm -hmm. But will it case about it? Mm -hmm only to realize that it's more of genetic than the personality itself. Mm. Like, uh, for example, when you come, these people, we have this, uh, the growth also, mm -hmm. it's also affected in their personality issue. Mm. When somebody's a dwarf, mm. this person will feel, we have some personality in him specific, that this, there is inferiority mm -hmm. in that person. Mm -hmm. And whenever you come to tell this person about something, mm will it think you are teasing that the same person mm. instead of joking will mm. take it as, as a tease Seriously. i think but there's teasing some who really have joking. like strong personalities <laughs> yeah. like there's some yeah. who come across and they have like really really strong personalities so yeah yeah it's dependent i guess yeah, yeah but yeah. can we yeah, talk yeah. about those the, the cholerics and whatnot <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that that is what i really want to understand more and and who is more prone to getting the you know anxiety disorder so christina uh, I think it would be difficult to yeah. actually um, s uh, settle on a certain personality, personality. profile All right. that would um, make someone be prone to mm -hmm. uh, getting um, anxiety mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there are all these other risk factors that come into oh, play. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are so many other mm -hmm. risk factors. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you find that uh, people who tend to have anxiety issues mm -hmm. are those who are probably shy, they're not mm -hmm. expressive, so they tend yeah. to bottle up their issues or it their is, feelings yes. uh -huh. uh, or timid people. Uh -huh. So you find that those are the kind of uh, personalities mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. might mm -hmm. um, lead one into getting an anxiety All right. uh, disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but of yeah. course, like we said, it's not just the personality, yeah, other yeah. factors. Yeah. There are so many other risk factors that, yeah. Yeah, that All right. play a part. All right. Now, yeah. and, and what about a person's background? Does it also determine whether they will get um, an anxiety disorder or not, especially for the children? I want to understand, do, first of all, do the children actually have cases of person, not personality, but mm -hmm. anxiety yes. yeah, disorders? Yeah, mm -hmm. they have. Mm -hmm. Because this maybe the baby, mm -hmm. when uh, the background that is, mm -hmm. maybe this baby, when he was still infant, infant or rather, mm -hmm. has maybe some few months and mm -hmm. then the parent dies of, mm -hmm. or rather succumb. Mm -hmm. This person is brought in another hand. All right. And uh, the way this guardian will treat this baby mm -hmm. may also cause that anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereby this person or this baby will be anxious of a unknown. Mm -hmm. That's what we call mm -hmm. of unknown. Mm -hmm. For example, this mother or rather the father is ever harsh to this baby. Mm -hmm. So this baby will always expect when he, he or she is coming back, yeah. what, will, what will I face? Sure. Mm -hmm. Will he beat me? Will he quarrel me? Mm -hmm. Will I eat or will I sleep angry? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that one also makes the, the child to be anxious yeah. now and then, yeah. especially when the parent is outside and then comes back. Mm -hmm. That one will have, with the, that persistence, anxiety will mm -hmm. develop into anxiety disorder. Anxiety disorder. Yeah. All right. And then um, mm -hmm. also, um, just to add on to what she has said, right. childhood experiences, mm -hmm. children who uh, experience abuse, mm. you know, in their early years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or they experience neglect, parental neglect, mm. you know, living in harsh conditions, mm -hmm. are more prone to getting um, anxiety disorders. Yeah. And uh, also, even going as far back as, uh, you know, the time when 
when, when they were in their mother's womb. Mm. So if the mother had um, anxiety issues or stress issues, mm. it could affect the fetus and, mm. of course, affect the, the, the baby, yeah? yeah, when the baby is delivered. Mm -hmm. And even during birth, during delivery, mm -hmm. that can also uh, cause anxiety, anxiety. Uh, yeah. issues to develop later in life. Huh? Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and especially when um, the, the, the mother has had either a, a very difficult delivery mm -hmm. I mean, or, or difficult labor, mm -hmm. prolonged labor mm -hmm. and difficult delivery. Mm -hmm. You find that later in life, a, a child might develop an anxiety um, disorder or an anxiety issues. Wait, how so? In I, yeah. Because, I, I um, yeah, like, like for example, uh -huh. okay, I've not read much about this, yeah. but I've heard that, uh, for example, if, if, if there was a difficult delivery mm -hmm. and the mother kept maybe trying to push out the baby and, mm -hmm. you know, it, All right. so you find that that baby can develop um, claustrophobia, uh -huh. you know, later right. in life. Ah, so okay. they fear of enclosed right. spaces, okay. you know. Okay. Such Wait, things. So they know when they're coming out of the womb. <laughs> and also, really they're congenital. recorded somewhere yeah. in their memory. Congenital yeah. issues. Eh? Uh -huh. yeah. That's congenital diseases that mm. maybe this mom has been suffering while he was pregnant, yeah. has been suffering with some conditions. Okay. And it's affected the uterus. Mm. So it w was stressing the child while mm. in the womb or rather the fetus. Mm. Right. So that okay. one may make the child also to develop that anxiety disorder. Okay. And also method of, uh, of delivery. giving delivery. Yeah. This child maybe it's a normal method, mm -hmm. method, mm -hmm. but during that delivery, the child hits the head on the floor by mistake. Oh, okay. That one it means the mind is shaken. Oh, yeah, the, the yeah. Yeah. Okay. When it sh when it shaken, okay. then that automatically that child will develop. No, if not autism, then will develop anxiety disorder. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now I get it. Okay. All right. Now so. Children or adults? Uh, can we talk about just very, very briefly because we have like I think a minute to go um, in terms to go for break. So, for how do I know then that I have anxiety disorder? Because like I said when we started the show, most of us, of course, we have a few cases where we we are anxious just about life, about situations, about events, about mm. people around us. Yeah. But then again, how do I know that mine is a disorder and not just? anxiety that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. So can, mm -hmm. you talk, can you start with children so that as parents, once we notice one, two, three things about our children, then we might know that this is a disorder and not just anxiety, and then we'll go on to adults. Okay, I think uh, in, in terms of knowing if it's a disorder mm -hmm. or if it's pathological, mm -hmm. uh, it goes with the intensity and, and also the, mm -hmm. you know, the duration. The duration. All right. So you find that if this child is excessively worried or mm -hmm. shows excessive fear, that uh, is not proportionate to the actual situation or the actual threat, right. then that becomes uh, a cause for concern. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you would look at it from, from, from that point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the child not being able to control their fear or their worry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and uh, another thing is that it is very, it's persistent, so mm -hmm. it's not like a one-off kind of thing, thing yeah. it's persistent, mm -hmm. and then it affects or it impairs actually mm -hmm. their functioning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're not able to go to school, it interferes with their schooling, mm -hmm. it interferes with how they relate with their peers, mm -hmm. it interferes with um, even how they just do their things, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so the, the, like a child might not want to go outside and play mm -hmm. because they're scared, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they're scared or they do not want to go and interact with um, you know, with the other children, children yeah. uh, mm -hmm. or they just um, quiet. Like in the case of um, uh, what we call this uh, selective mutism, is another mm -hmm. anxiety mm -hmm. uh, disorder mm -hmm. that happens in children. Yeah. So you find that children in this category who have selective mutism mm -hmm. find it very difficult to communicate and yeah. even speak when they are in in certain mm. settings. All right. For example, when they're in school. Mm -hmm. They can they go talk. mute or yeah. they only whisper to one child, yeah. you know, they'll not want to speak out. But mm -hmm. when they go back home, mm -hmm. they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. All because right. they're comfortable, they're relaxed, and mm -hmm. there are no threats, yeah. perceived threats. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's take that very short break. Mm -hmm. I'll come to you, um, Mary, in a short while, because we need to take a very short break right now. But when we come back, of course, we'll, we'll of course, uh, continue with the children a little bit and then translate into adulthood. And then, yeah, so if you have any other question in relation to the same, then feel free to call us live or 791-478-990 or send us a text message on 40920. Our lines are open and we'll be more than glad to answer all your questions as far as anxiety disorders. Orders is constant. So see you on the other side. Stay with us.
right, so welcome back. Thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you. Uh, and of course, today we're talking about anxiety disorders. So like I said, our lines are open. So feel free to call us live or 7914789990 or send us a text message on 40920 and we'll be more than glad to answer mm. all your questions as far as anxiety disorders are concerned. And of course, before we went for break, we were talking about... Um, some of the symptoms like how do you know that you have an anxiety disorder and we started with the children um, where of course cases of a child might actually go mute let's say in school but then again when they come home um, they're okay but now this might be very difficult for a parent to pick because mm -hmm. they're okay at home and mm -hmm. then when they go to school they become totally different mm. And then again, children, you see sometimes children are, might not be as expressive as adults because if I feel I am too anxious, I will just go and tell someone, by the way, this is, this is how I'm feeling. But then again, for the children, it might be very, very difficult to pick. So mm -hmm. as a parent, a guardian, or even a, a teacher, I mean, what are some of the, like, the telltale signs in terms mm -hmm. of, let's say they go quiet for some time or mm -hmm. they change in terms of they want to be sort of reserved mm -hmm. and, and all those things. What are some of those telltale signs to pick? Um, very briefly before go to me. Um, okay, so like in the case of a child who is suffering from selective mutism mm -hmm. in the school environment, yeah. um, the parent may not be able to know, mm. but they will get reports from the teachers. From the teacher, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so the teachers, of course, will will be able to observe if mm -hmm. they are keen enough. Mm -hmm. They should be keen enough to, yeah. to be able to know that this child is not behaving the way, um, the way other children should behave at mm -hmm. their developmental level. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, the, the parents, I mean, the um, teachers the should teacher. be able to report mm -hmm. that to their parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, and even before then, the teacher should be able to put in some interventions to try and help this child mm -hmm. before they actually um, conclude that this child is having mm -hmm. a problem that needs uh, maybe professional help, help yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and also you find that with all these things, uh, there'll be an uh, impact on, mm -hmm. on, their, on, their, on their school performance. Sure. So mm -hmm. of course it will reflect on their school performance. If they're not performing well in school, mm -hmm. um, and you know when they're at home, you find that your child is fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they seem to be smart, they mm -hmm. seem to be intelligent, mm -hmm. they're bright and all that, mm -hmm. they're happy. Mm -hmm. But then this is not reflected in their school, in performance. Their school performance. Then yeah. as a parent, then you would want to know why is this happening. Mm -hmm. And that is why it is important for parents to be involved in, 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 you know, in, their, in their child's mm -hmm. um, issues at school mm -hmm. and even in other social environments. You know, yeah. like if they go for school trips mm -hmm. or even when they go to church, for example, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, social space or family gatherings, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. It would be good. Uh, it would be good for a parent to also observe how does their child mm -hmm. um, behave in such in settings. Such settings. Yeah. So we'll right. be able to pin mm -hmm. uh, to pick some of these things. All right. Yeah. Okay, and Mary, you wanted to add something as well. Okay. On the, on the symptoms. Mm -hmm. the signs and symptoms of mm -hmm. uh, anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. They are into three categories, major mm -hmm. categories, mm -hmm. although there is a, a minor category, a minor category. that All is right. the fourth one. Mm -hmm. But the major three, mm -hmm. one, we look for a whole body. Mm -hmm. A whole body, it means uh, general fatigue, <laughs> malaise. Mm -hmm. Somebody just feels fatigue, has mm -hmm. done nothing, mm -hmm. but just tired, tired mm -hmm. always. But right. you it want has taken some days feeling the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then you have cognitive. Mm -hmm. Cognitive, it means this person, lack of concentration. Yeah racing mm. and then uh, thoughts mm. that is unwanted thoughts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. repeatedly come in the mind mm -hmm. and also we have another one called um, behavioral mm. behavioral changes whereby you this one is mostly seen in children mm. where the whereby the parent will see the when this child is uh, in a multitude mm. for sure is ever silent is mm. ever mute mm. but when it comes back home alone with the parents very free. Mm. So mm. that behavioral change mm -hmm. also uh, is a sign of mm. anxiety disorder. Mm. Then we have the common one, the common signs mm. like uh, hypersomnia, mm. hyposomnia. Mm -hmm. Hypersomnia, I mean oversleeping. Yeah. We have some people when they are anxious, when they are stressed, they oversleep. Mm -hmm. So you may get this person or rather the child is sleeping a lot mm. or rather has hyposomnia, mm -hmm. sleeps just short period yeah. and then wakes up. And then wakes up most, of the time, most of the night this person is ever awake, mm. maybe sleeps only two hours. Mm. Then we have some, when it is fear, it goes to insomnia. Mm. At night they don't sleep they at all. Sleep, at, all. Yeah. at daytime they don't sleep, mm -hmm. but they just panic 
and uh, distress of the unknown. Mm. Yeah. All right, and of course that also goes for the same for the for the adults. That um, is. Yeah, but now you know that some people so most of the time we're we're in denial. Like me, I have a problem, but I just can't. I can't say. Um, because again, cases of stigma where um, what will people say or what will people think um, you know, about me. So can we talk about how this, of course, ends up affecting a person's life? We talked about the children where, of course, the, the school performance is affected and, and even the just environment around them where they cannot interact with other children and all that. But for an adult, how will this, of course, affect a person's life? Okay, it affects it due to changes in daily activities. Mm -hmm. Like as, as I've said, when you come to whole body mm. as a sign, mm. this person is fatigued, maybe like farming, mm. but has reached a point that even cannot go to farm. Mm. Or every morning complains of being tired. Mm. Every morning complains of being work, mm -hmm. cannot do anything. Mm. Or maybe like cleanliness at home, mm. but this person is not doing anything, anything. has reached a point whereby mm. even lose interest in everything in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. So this one also shows uh, it shows this person, mm -hmm. a man or a, a woman, a, a man, a lady mm -hmm. or a man, mm -hmm. that for sure the anxiety I'm having mm -hmm. is not the normal anxiety. Right. Uh, she, she or he has to see the doctor. Mm -hmm. More so, when you come to cognitive, mm -hmm. this person has unwanted thoughts. Mm -hmm. For example, you have some, this is common to many people, mm -hmm. especially the relative has gone or the friend has gone for a journey massive mm -hmm. has gone for a journey yeah has traveled. but uh, mm -hmm. this person is just thinking of maybe mm -hmm. this person has gotten an accident mm -hmm. this person on the way is not good maybe the mm -hmm. police has arrested them mm -hmm. thinking about death and everything that mm -hmm. is negative mm -hmm. concerning life all right so that one will show this person uh, the patient or rather the client has anxiety, mm -hmm. anxiety disorder, disorder. And then okay. uh, mm -hmm. the same issue for example, this one comes commonly with caffeine. When mm. somebody takes excessive caffeine, mm -hmm. will experience palpitations. Mm. Palpitations, it means rapid heartbeat. Yeah. Mm. So when this person is experiencing palpitation, worries, and when you ask, even he himself doesn't know what's mm. the problem. Mm. That one also lies on cognitive. All right. That also makes that person to see the doctor because mm. of that anxiety mm. has gone to beyond the mm -hmm. normal okay the normal emotion all right uh, we come to behavioral mm -hmm. like the has been so happy throughout mm -hmm. maybe since childhood yeah and this other but has reached yeah. a point where has no interest with any positive talk mm -hmm. when we see somebody laughing then is irritated mm -hmm. That one also shows this person has a problem yeah. with the anxiety emotions. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now we have a question here. This one says, hi, Ebru. My name is Becky from Naivasha Road. Um, I want to ask, does anxiety disorder cause headaches like migraine? I have, I have been having an anxiety disorder since last year, August, mm -hmm. and it's been hard to control it because I do not have anyone I trust to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it can mm -hmm. cause uh, headaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because apart from just anxiety affecting how you feel, mm -hmm. it also affects you physically, yeah. mm -hmm. just as uh, it happens with many mental disorders. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the physical symptoms that you will manifest mm -hmm. um, if you're dealing with a lot of anxiety issues mm -hmm. is, is headaches yeah. Yeah? or chronic pain because anxiety will cause a lot of uh, muscular tension. Mm -hmm. So your muscles are always tensed up mm -hmm. and uh, they're always sore and painful. Mm -hmm. So prolonged um, exposure to anxiety mm -hmm. will obviously lead to chronic pain. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, uh, anxiety can also cause, uh, I'm talking about the physical symptoms, right. it can also cause um, gastrointestinal problems. Oh, wow. So okay. we, we are looking at um, mm -hmm. hypercidity issues, mm -hmm. you're looking at stomach ulcers, mm -hmm. We are looking at constipation issues, mm -hmm. but usually they'll, they'll get diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Actually, usually yeah. they'll get diarrhea yeah. and a lot of nausea. All right. So those are the kind of this, uh, physical symptoms mm -hmm. um, that can result from having an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, as she had say, uh, mm -hmm. uh, she has uh, pointed out mm -hmm. that you also get heart, uh, you know, palpitations. Palpitations, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. which, which is a physical symptom of, mm -hmm. of, of anxiety right. and insomnia in adults mm -hmm. so they're not able to sleep because they are 
their bodies are actually hyper aroused so mm. they, they they're not able to sleep uh because of yeah. you know being in a state of anxiety being yeah. in a state of arousal mm -hmm. um yeah all right basically okay now now what, what are you talking about now makes it even difficult in my case to, <laughs> to diagnose because now yeah. um, this person might think that let's say they have especially when they have cases of diarrhea and um, and they will be like okay so this is this is more on I have probably ate something yeah. you know or you know something happened and I, I did not or or you know just other things that might contrary to to having um, anxiety disorder because mm -hmm. now if I have these other physical symptoms and I go to hospital I'll just tell the doctor what I'm feeling mm -hmm. but not cases of anxiety and, and and all that because most of the time we don't tend to think that that can be as serious mm -hmm. as other you know health health complications now aside from those um, do we have other uh, what is it called like other complications like can they also get cases of depression suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts you know and and all that may you want to take yeah mm -hmm. okay a little bit behind mm -hmm. uh, what you have said about your diarrhea mm -hmm. this person well, if you want to know whether has diarrhea as a just a disease on its own mm -hmm. or rather has been caused by anxiety yeah the the thing that he or she should experience mm -hmm. is Especially this one is manifested in a um, panic attack. That's mm. a type of anxiety. anxiety. Mm -hmm. This person always panic, maybe has taken so many times, uh, so many days uh, mm. panicking mm. and mm. doesn't know the reason as to why mm -hmm. he or she is panicking. All right. So when she panic for a certain period, mm -hmm. obvious the, the mind will mm -hmm. change, sure. will change the brain mm -hmm. set up or rather the brain activities mm. and then when the brain is changed you mm -hmm. know it controls everything sure. so mm. it will also affect the mm. abdomen all right will cause the headache mm. because it's stressing up the brain mm. as it's expected mm. and then once it causes the headache the severe headache will cause the abdominal pains yeah. or rather the abdominal problems all right yeah so may cause that diarrhea we have some uh, depending to hormones of people, mm -hmm. we have some who always feel, who always experience constipation, not only, Again, all not right. only diarrhea. Yeah. Some always feel experience constipation, mm -hmm. and then we have uh, like in ladies, we have menstrual disorders, mm -hmm. like somebody maybe had his his or her period mm -hmm. two days ago or rather mm -hmm. one week ago, mm -hmm. but because of and anxiety, come back again. it comes back again. Yeah, yeah, because right. of that mm -hmm. hormonal changes mm -hmm. due to stress. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now, so how do we know in terms of the test? Like when someone comes with all those symptoms that we talked about. Um, so then, how does either either psychologists or doctors? First of all, who do you even go to see? Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, because again, from the the, the symptoms, I mean, and, and the complications. Yeah. So might go to a general doctor, but in real sense, this mm -hmm. this is something that they need to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. So who do we see first? And then what are some of the tests that done and medication? So can we talk about that very, very briefly, briefly because our time is far much spent. Okay, mm -hmm. it depends uh, with mm -hmm. the severity All right. of the anxiety itself. Mm -hmm. Maybe this person has been anxious mm -hmm. and then diarrhea started just two days ago and mm -hmm. it's realizing this diarrhea is not normal mm. and uh, I'm not feeling abdominal pains yeah. but I'm feeling fatigue, mm -hmm. stressed up. So if at all it's not severe, mm -hmm. then can just consult the psychologist. Mm. What is the problem? Because mm -hmm. not, all, not all anxiety disorders mm -hmm. need medical mm. attention. All right. So may, if at all it's not severe, then mm -hmm. has to see a psychologist. All right. But if at all it is very severe, mm -hmm. then has to see a psychiatrist because should involve even medication in mm, the same point. In the, in the, in the, all right, okay. So when they come to a psychologist, then what happens? Do you talk to them? Because most people know when you go to a psychologist, they'll try to just talk you out and see, and then figure out where you are mm. at. So when they come to a psychologist, what happens? And then what are some of the treatment options for them? Um, so when this person is with an anxiety mm -hmm. um, disorder comes to a psychologist, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing that the psychologist <coughs> needs to do is take the patient's history mm. or the client's history. All right. And uh, and of course, the history will involve a lot of things. Mm. You know, mm. uh, there'll be uh, the psychologist will look at the predisposing factors. Mm. They look at the um, uh, the precipitating factors. Mm. They look at factors that uh, perpetuate the condition. Mm. They will look at all the other protective factors. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. um, 
now from, from the history taking, uh, it will also help mm -hmm. the psychologist to know um, what kind of anxiety, anxiety disorder this person, this person has. Is. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, even before the psychologist proceeds with treatment, mm -hmm in terms of now psychotherapy, mm -hmm. uh, they would need to have this ruled out. So bas uh, to have um, an anxiety-induced, uh, how do I put it? Mm -hmm. um, they, they want to rule out any medical condition that oh, could have caused cause. anxiety. Right. So okay. Uh, okay. based on the history that um, the client has presented, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the judgment, based on that clinical judgment, the, mm -hmm. the, the psychologist would be able probably to mm -hmm. refer this person mm -hmm. to a doctor all right. to rule out any medical conditions mm -hmm. that may cause anxiety. anxiety. All right. Now, if that is ruled out mm -hmm. and we find that the, the, the anxiety is not caused by any medical condition mm -hmm. uh, or is not caused by probably any substance, mm -hmm. then now we'd look at it mm -hmm. as being caused by psychological issues, okay. psychosocial issues, all basically. Right. Okay. And that is where now treatment begins. Mm -hmm. So as a psychologist, um, uh, the preferred uh, treatment is um, psychotherapy, basically. So mm -hmm. we are looking at uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, mm -hmm. where we focus on um, you know, the, the cognitive processes of this person mm -hmm. and also their behavioral, uh, mm -hmm. you know, behavioral Function, modifications. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and also within that cognitive behavioral therapy, we are also looking at exposure techniques. Mm -hmm. So we're exposing this client mm -hmm to those uh, situations or those things that 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 trigger anxiety mm. to be able to desensitize them yeah so a lot happens in yeah. you know in therapy yeah but again even as you're exposing this person as a psychologist you must be able to um you must be able to gauge if this person should actually be exposed because mm. you know it depends on yeah. what is actually causing mm. that anxiety. Mm. Mm. You may end up exposing this person and then they end up do more harm than yeah, good. You end yeah. up doing more harm yeah. than yeah. good. Yeah, you worsen right. the situation or mm -hmm. increase the dropout rates. Yes. So they, they may not even comply with the treatment. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course that I mean that will yeah, not so help them. <laughs> yeah. In, in yes. any way. Yeah. All right. But again, mm -hmm. um, besides psychotherapy, uh, he, she has talked about medication. Mm. Um, so you cannot, uh, okay, so for mild to moderately severe mm -hmm. cases of anxiety, mm -hmm. psychotherapy usually works quite all right, well. All right. uh, but in cases where we have severe anxiety, mm -hmm. then medication um, has to be mm -hmm. uh, involved. involved. All right. uh, but again, even as they, they, uh, the doctor prescribes medication, mm -hmm. they have to dose it in such a way that mm -hmm this medication will not affect this person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the point that they're completely dependent on that medication, on medication. to yeah. manage the anxiety. Yeah. The dosage should be such that it's enough to let this person be in a state of um, tolerable functionality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meaning that mm -hmm. they'll still, even when they're on that medication, they'll still be able to experience anxiety mm -hmm. and put in place measures to cope with that anxiety yeah. or to manage yeah. with that anxiety mm -hmm. and also be in a position that they're able to learn, uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to experience new learning. Mm -hmm. Because in psychotherapy, we, we are teaching clients, or for example, if you have social anxiety, we'll be helping this client to build up on their social skills, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Now, if this person is overwhelmed mm -hmm. um, you know, with medication, mm -hmm. they may not be able to True. experience yeah. that new learning. True. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the yeah. therapeutic gains will not mm -hmm. be achieved. Yeah. Yes. All right. So doctors have to also look at the mm -hmm. the, the dosage yeah. of of the medication the that they're giving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then and then again now, it, where how how long is a person or a, supposed to be on medication or supposed to start feeling better um, after after medication? Are there some people who have to be on medication, let's say for a longer period of time, or others have to be on medication throughout? Okay, it depends with the severity mm -hmm. of the anxiety disorder itself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the duration, mm -hmm. because you have some people maybe they have been ha experiencing anxiety disorder, but they have been neglecting mm -hmm. not to go to see a doctor. Sure. They have taken a very long, long period time. of time. Yeah. So it has developed to another deep mm -hmm. point that can not respond very fast. Mm -hmm. And then also it depends with the body response towards the medication mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that one, it means that we cannot give a specific period mm. uh, based into general Gen generalization yeah. of All people. Right. It's but different. it mm -hmm. is specific as per mm -hmm. the person how we respond mm. 
the severity of that uh, disease, that mm -hmm. is uh, anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. and also the compliance. Mm -hmm. Because we have some people when, when they are given medication, mm -hmm. They take two days and then they think they are yeah, better. Yeah, when you start feeling you better, stop you stop. Yeah, okay, stop. all right. Then we have some people. Uh, okay, another thing, it depends with the episodes. Mm. Because maybe there is this person has experienced only one episode or mm. two episodes mm. of that anxiety. Mm. But to have somebody, it has been coming repeatedly, yeah. on, off, on, off. Yeah. That one, the duration will be longer than the one has just yeah. with the new, yeah. new patient okay. in that field. All right. Mm. Okay. And then very, very briefly, then um, are there lifestyle changes that one has to make mm -hmm. when they have, or either before or after treatment, mm -hmm. um, as far as anxiety disorder is concerned? Is there, are there changes that one has to? Yes, mm -hmm. one has to make lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, if, if, if your anxiety disorder is induced by substances, the use mm -hmm. of substances, yeah. then you have to abstain from those substances. Mm -hmm. If uh, your anxiety disorder is because of uh, medic certain medications, mm. then as we had discussed earlier, yeah. you need to have your medication reviewed mm -hmm. um, and, and probably changed, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. um, then we are also talking about um, exercise. Exercise mm. is like a very potent stress yeah. buster. <laughs> <You get. laughs> so yeah. exercise, exercise, exercise. exercise yeah. When you exercise, you're releasing the feel-good hormones mm. and you'll feel better mm. and you'll be less anxious. Yeah. Um, so exercise is very important. Mm -hmm. And then also having enough sleep. I mm. know anxiety will cause insomnia. Yeah. Um, and if you're struggling to get sleep, then uh, probably a doctor would help you to, mm. you know, give you something that will help you to fall mm -hmm. asleep. Uh, and also having... Um, Fall asleep and stay asleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, but again, you have to be very, very careful that you're not dependent on that, uh, yeah. on the, you know, the, the sleeping pills. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have to combine um, that with other, other things, mm -hmm. other lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about eating right as well, yeah. and um, avoiding stressors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. avoiding mm -hmm. stressors mm -hmm. uh, because also stress buildup would mm -hmm. trigger anxiety. Yeah. So if you're working in a work environment that has a lot of stress, mm -hmm. you're having crazy deadlines, mm -hmm. you need to have a lot of self-care techniques yeah. so that you don't um, end up triggering mm -hmm. or maintaining your anxiety. Yeah. Um, anxiety uh, what uh, disorder or condition. Disorders, yes. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as, as we fit, all right. Um, <laughs> no, we've been forgotten the All right, okay, it it's fine. All right, so we need to end the show in the next, yeah. like, minute or so. Okay. So in terms of, is it, is it preventable, really? And, and especially for cases where it's genetic, you see there's nothing mm -hmm. much that we can do. Mm -hmm. But for the other, you know, types, um, can, are there things that we can do to prevent, either in children and in adults? Very, very briefly, I think I'll take that yeah. as your part. Just we'll start with you, Mary. Yeah, it is very pre preventable, mm -hmm. whereby the... Like in adults, mm -hmm. as uh, my colleague has said, mm -hmm. when you are using maybe substance that induce anxiety, mm -hmm. like alcohol, mm -hmm. smoking, and substance abuse, mm -hmm. that one, like caffeine. Caffeine, mm -hmm. yes, so many people take, like yeah. we're taking coffee, that is mm -hmm. caffeine. Mm -hmm. But you have to take very little, yes. not excessive. All right. So that you have to control. Mm -hmm. When you, for example, we have some people whom even if they take little, mm -hmm. but it will affect them. Mm -hmm. So when you know this is the cause, you then you have to avoid yeah. that. Okay. More so, alcohol. Alcohol mm -hmm. is the, it's always a high risk yeah. of developing anxiety mm -hmm. disorder. Mm -hmm. So all people must abstain, yeah. must abstain from alcohol intake. Mm -hmm. And then uh, smoking also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you have some people, they smoke, they say it has no problem yeah but immediately after Long smoking yeah. or rather uh -huh. when has missed some hours uh -huh. with us or has stayed some hours without smoking mm -hmm. then they develop that anxiety, anxiety. all right to a point of want to steal money so because yeah. they want to smoke they want to smoke okay and then right. in children uh -huh. once we realize the cause mm -hmm. for example maybe the harsh environment they are mm -hmm. undergoing mm -hmm. and that's why our government came up with a certain setup of mm -hmm. rescue children's mm -hmm. home so if at all that, that child is in the, another harsh environment, mm -hmm. better to be rescued yeah, and then put in the, the environment that environment. can favor that all child. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary, thank you very much. Christina, very briefly, like 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> How to prevent. Yes, or your parting shot in general as far as um, anxiety disorder is concerned. Um, I think uh, 
basically what I would want to say is uh, as a parting shot mm -hmm. that if you feel that you're having issues with anxiety, issues mm -hmm. controlling your fears, mm -hmm. It is best to seek treatment early mm -hmm. rather than wait for it to escalate until now it becomes a complicated thing mm -hmm. or a full-blown anxiety mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, attack, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very important to seek early and appropriate treatment. All right. And uh, and even when you when you when when you're on treatment, mm -hmm. it would be important to stick to your treatment. So treatment yeah. compliance is important. It's very very important. And not okay. only uh, when you're on medication, but also with psychotherapy, mm -hmm. because when you go for all those sessions and you're consistent mm -hmm. with them, then it helps you to you know mm. gain a lot therapeutically all right, all right. Uh, medication as well you have to be you you have to you know comply with your treatment all right. uh, mm -hmm. because also when you withdraw from medication before time mm. then of course uh, you, you might have a relapse. A relapse, true. Yeah, yeah. All right. Mm. Okay, thank you so much to both of you for coming by today. We have thank to you. end the show right now. Yeah. I know this is a topic that we can talk and talk and talk about because it's, it's very, true. very important for us to highlight some of those things mm. because, like I said, sometimes we tend to think, we don't take things seriously, yeah. but then, of course, when they progress, it can it can be really detrimental yeah. to yeah. us and, of course, to the people around us. So thank you very much for coming by thank today. And of course, thank you so much for staying with us as well until the end of the show. So I believe that you've picked a thing or two as far as anxiety disorder Orders are concerned and if you notice someone around you is suffering from an anxiety disorder it's very very important for you to help them to seek help as soon as possible so we have to edit here my name is Winnie Lubembe on behalf of our many amazing amazing team who made the show a success we wish you a lovely day ahead we'll see you again tomorrow same time same place for another dose of my doctor but for now it's a goodbye from us